Hello, I'm Sandra Brown, and my new novel is Overkill. I'm going to read to you from the first chapter when we're introduced to the hero, Zach Bridger, and also introduced to his problem. Zach Bridger's life was upended while in the Cayman Islands, sitting at the pool bar, sipping a cold beer, and chilling to Buffett's Cheeseburger in Paradise. It was only 8.30 in the morning, but his date of the week had wanted to claim an ideal spot for sunbathing the day away, so she dragged him out of bed early. Isn't that your ex? Zach, who'd been enjoying the array of lubricated female flesh around the swimming pool, turned toward the bartender, who hitched his goatee up toward the TV where a photo of Rebecca dominated the upper right-hand corner of the screen behind the anchor woman's shoulder. An indifferent grunt was Zach's response to both the bartender's question and the picture. He couldn't attach the word wife to the woman beguiling the camera with her slow eyes. It escaped him how he could have pledged his everlasting love honor and fidelity to her. Neither of them had kept their vows. He had, however, endowed Rebecca with a hell of a lot of his worldly goods. He said, best years of my life have been the five since our divorce. Hear ya, the bartender gave him a kindred grin, then glanced over his shoulder at the TV, which now featured another picture of Rebecca. Recently, she's been hanging with a hockey player, one of those without any vowels in his name. Pity the poor bastard, Zach said. The bartender chuckled. I think they've split. I don't keep up. Occasionally, by accident, he'd catch a mention of her on one of those hyperactive celeb tracking shows. She was usually featured as a gorgeous accessory draped over the arm of a guy who was trending on social media. The bartender wiped up a spill. You must have whetted her appetite for professional athletes. Zach saluted the bartender with his fresh beer. We're supposed to be cool with celebrity guests, not make a big deal, you know, but I have to tell you, I'm a huge fan. Got a pen? Uh, yeah, sure. The bartender produced a ballpoint. Zach pulled a cocktail napkin from the holder on the bar and scrawled his autograph on it. With slate of hand, the bartender pocketed the signed napkin. Thanks, man. No problem. Rebecca's name still appeared in the bulletin scrolling across the bottom of the screen. Zach set down his beer and slid his sunglasses onto the top of his head. Turn up the sound, please. The bartender did as requested, upping the volume enough for the anchor woman to be heard. She was saying, authorities have told us that the 911 call came in at 8.08 .08 this morning, but the caller has yet to be identified. First responders arrived at the Clark Mansion within 13 minutes of the 911 and found Rebecca Pratt in an upstairs guest bedroom. We don't have details yet, but her condition has been described as unresponsive. Unresponsive didn't sound good at all. Zach wandered back toward the pool, trying to remember where he had deposited his date of the week, <laughs> trying to remember her name. He finally spotted her. As he wended his way around other sunbathers toward them, his cell phone rang. Recognizing an Atlanta area code, he figured it was a news outlet who had bribed his number out of somebody. Likely they would want a soundbite from him regarding Rebecca in what was certain to be today's lead story. In his mind, he formed something appropriate to say, something to which no one could take exception, something conveying concern, but disconnection. He thumbed on his phone. This is Zach. Within 30 seconds, he wished he'd never answered that call. I hope you'll read and enjoy Overkill. Thank you.